Giants football get us going here on this Tuesday after what was yet another terrible loss in Kansas City last night against the Chiefs. Even go, they went into the game as a nine and a half or a ten and a half point dog, wherever mm-hmm. the closing line was last night, whatever sports book you uh he or she might be using. But you know, you come out of that game and and I'm a huge judge fan. I've made mo- no bones about it. I've, I've been uh, yeah, I've been Absolutely. I'm bored with Joe Judge from the introductory presser to everything. I'll tell you, he continues to test my patience as a Judge supporter as the days and the games go on here. We are 24 games in to the Joe Judge experience here as Giant head coach. 24, not 10, not 20. We are 24 games in to the Judge experience. 16 a year ago, 8 this year. The Giants are a 2-6 and six football team after the three-point loss last night in Kansas City. You know, from judge after the game last night, number one, I can't continue to hear about cleaning up penalties when penalties continue to be an issue for this team Mm. and you're eight games into the year where the Giants have 10 penalties for 88 yards last night. And listen, I think the Giants were a prepared team to play Kansas City last night. I think Patrick Graham's probably the best coach on that entire staff because the defensive game plan was utterly fantastic and the defense did its job to win a football game on the road in Arrowhead, even though they were a decided underdog. But from a judge perspective, here's where you call in a question about really how good of a head coach he is and how much patience you're going to have with judge. Number one, the penalties. He talks about cleaning up after the game. Number two, the clock management, whether it be at the end of the first half or whether it be at the end of the game and the use of the timeouts, even though he's using the dopey excuse after the game of blaming the headsets and hardware and software and right. talking to the National Football League and having issues in every road game that the Giants have had this year, that there have been issues with the Giant headsets and communications. That's why they're burning timeouts left and right. The clock management for Joe Judge, end of the game, the two-minute off offense for the Giants at the end of the first half was completely and utterly embarrassing. And then afterward with the game, Joe, this is not a this is not a rebuilding situation. This is a scenario here where if you're going to talk about your players getting better and it's on the coaching staff and talking about the penalties or talking about a, you know a guy on special teams, one of the dopiest penalties you've ever seen after a bad punt, you know, steps out of bounds, comes in bounds as the first guy to touch the ball is a five yard penalty. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to have your head in the game, especially when that scenario where that is a winnable football game. So. I look at Joe Judge, and you can have questions about Dave Gettleman and how long should he be out? Should he be handling the trade deadline, which is 4 o'clock this afternoon? Who's going to be taking over this team after this season? You can talk about Daniel Jones, and you can clearly have questions about the giant quarterback after, you know, let's be honest, he showed a lot of inexperience. Amazingly enough, even though this is year three last night in Kansas City, you know, I think you have every right, though, to look at the, you know, the head stinking from the the fish stinking from the head down. <laughs> right. And not done. Not the, uh, I'm looking at that coaching staff. I understand you can be critical of John Mara, and you can look at Joe Judge and the job that he did last night in Kansas City. He didn't help the Giants. He hurt the Giants. To be honest, this is not what I thought a Joe Judge coach team was going to look like. I feel like this is not what we were promised here. As, as and Giants fans have got to be really feel like they were maybe sold a bill of goods because nobody is looking at this team and thinking, man. That team is buttoned up. Man, they do everything right. That's just a smarter football team than their opponent or anything like that. No, instead, you had a team in Kansas City that was committing more penalties than the Giants. You could say maybe worse penalties for the Giants until the O'Shane Zimenez and then the face mask, the phantom face mask, but it gets called anyway. You you could say that Kansas City was the more discombobulated team and somehow the Giants managed to outdo them in a bad way. This is not what I thought a Joe Judge team was going to look like. And you have to believe, Moose, that when you're on the road in a game you're in, take the name away from the uniform, right? Say you took the name off the Kansas City Chiefs uniform and you took away the fact that they are, you know, have had so much success in the recent history. You were playing a mediocre team last night. You're on the road playing a mediocre team that was trying to gift you this game and the Giants' offense could not overcome themselves to win that football game. How do you not look at the coaching? And how do you not, like, if you're Joe Judge and you're really going to go into a post-game press conference and say that the headsets have been an issue every game this season, so why is it still an issue in Week 8? What about finding a solution? 
If he says we got to go to hand signals, that should have been like week two, week three. You're going to well, wait till week eight. But it's it, 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 no doubt. You're you're absolutely right. That's why if you're Joe Judge, you can't, you know, before you start to think about what you're about to say, don't say it. <laughs> Even if that's the issue, don't say it because you come across. I mean, it's a moronic statement. Yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, and people are going to laugh and they're going to mock you and it's going to be on social media. It's going to be run back. It's almost like the Eagles coach talking about the roots and and the tree is growing <laughs> underground. Fertilizer. I mean, you're, you're thinking to yourself, what the hell are you? Why are you saying that? <laughs> don't say it. Like, it's a, amazing. Don't admit it. Even if that was the issue, don't say it. Don't admit that to the press. <laughs> don't tell your fan <laughs> base so that that is an issue. It is week eight. It's not week one. It's not week two. Judge, I mean, have a little bit of a self-awareness uh, about what's going on. Don't admit that. Even if that is the reason <laughs> and the culprit, don't say it. You blame Take the hardware the and the software. Put it on yourself. Wow. You're right. Listen, I, I, I come out of that game, and Graham is a great coach. He really is. I mean, and the you know, and, did their part. Uh, the defense was fantastic. We talked about it last night. Uh, well, yesterday morning, I should say, we talked about Maggie during the course of the show. Make them go the long way. They don't want to go the long way. Well, uh, you know, they're going to get frustrated. You can get the ball. You know, Mahomes is going to make um, erroneous throws. You'll be able to generate a fumble against Kelsey or Tyree Kill or whatever. All of those things happen. All of those things happen. But as Judge is telling everyone, well, we got to be better. We got to be better as a staff. We got to be better coaching these guys. Well, there does come a point in time where when you start to see and you continue to see the same issues. Yes. The same issues. It's not the – this is not what we, – we've seen the penalties be an issue. We've seen the penalties take turnovers away. We've seen the Giants and Daniel Jones not be able to handle certain – and I don't want to hear about, oh, hand signals now. Daniel Jones, this is year three. Year two with Jason Garrett, if the communication system goes down at the end of the first half and you're running a two-minute offense and your job is to be an NFL quarterback, you should be able, as an NFL quarterback, year three in the National Football League, to be able to run a two-minute offense, year two under Garrett's offense, without having Garrett tell you which plays need to be run next. You should be able to do that. It should not be a case where that two-minute offense at the end of the first half was comically bad to the point where they, they finally took a knee to end the first half. What are you doing? I know you're getting the ball to start half number two, but you're watching that and you're saying, this is an atrocious Chiefs defense. It's an atrocious Chiefs defense. And I said, I thought the Giants would at least score 24 points last night. They didn't. They scored 17. Mm -hmm. They generate a turnover, amazingly enough, on the Chiefs' opening possession where Mahomes hits McKinnon in the helmet, bounces up in the air, picked off by the Giants. Two plays later, Daniel Jones is giving it right back. The pickoff by Gay as he's trying to hit Darius Slayton. Like, there does come a point where you're saying, you know, get your head in the game. Yeah. Don't stare down the receiver. And for Judge after the game, no more excuses. No more lame excuses. This should be buttoned up. You were sold. We were all sold. A Belichick disciple. Everyone's talking about his personality. Be yourself. But you nailed it, Maggie. Here's the deal. You thought the Giants were going to be smarter. The Giants were going to be crisper. The Giants were going to play clean games. The Giants weren't going to beat themselves. You've seen none of that. No. Through 24 games. No, they talk You've a seen big none game, of that but you don't through see 24 it. games here for Joe Judge. No, the, the delivery is football guy, and you think that if you you know you're talking a certain way and you're saying all the right things, but then when you get to the game, you just you're not seeing any of the evidence here. Where is the evidence from week one to now? I mean, you can go back to last season if you want. We can keep it with this season. Where's the evidence in the here and now that this is a buttoned up team? I mean, really, where do we have like you know when when the real nitty gritty when it's winning time when it's the fourth quarter? Giants have a lead. Hell, in the beginning of that fourth quarter, when it's winning time, when it's crunch time, like when are you going to show that you are the difference maker? We have one. Maybe 12 good minutes so far this year in terms of a tight game that the Giants end up pulling out on the road. That Saints game, right, where Daniel Jones elevated him himself and was like, I'm the difference and I'm going to go out and win this game for the Giants. And he basically did, right? That was the Saints game. That was nothing you got last night. I mean, he was rattled. It seemed like, yeah, from the first from the first possession, not even rattled. Like, that was just a dumb interception. And even the Mannings, like Peyton is apoplectic. First of all, every time a quarterback throws an interception, it's like a little part of the Mannings die. You know, it's just like you take a little bit of Peyton's soul every time a quarterback does something dumb. And he's talking about why is Daniel Jones just staring down the receiver? As you just mentioned, it was like old Daniel out there. You know, the one that we thought had sort of been exercised. Those demons were gone. 
And now they come right back. And listen, th- there was a lot more that happened after the game, you know, during the game after that. You know, throw an interception, throw it early, right? You have a chance to, you know, better early than late, I guess. But it just set a bad tone. I'll be honest with you, Maggie. It set a bad tone. We said tone you for me. had to be almost perfect if you're going to win on the road. The offense was nothing you, but. Right. You generate a pick. You're going up against a Chiefs defense that's atrocious. I mean, they are atrocious. I know they had Chris Jones and Frank Clark back last night, and both were healthy. And the Giants tackle. Solder's an embarrassment. I mean, he really is. I mean, he's a terrible tackle. Well, he's over the about- hill. He's a swing guy. He shouldn't be starting. They severely miss Andrew Thomas. Where's the creativity if you're Garrett? As a play caller, why are you not having Daniel Jones on the run more and having to move the pocket? Why are you not making use of his athletic ability and his speed and ability to go out there and run? Why aren't you doing that? I mean, that defense was ripe for the picking. Yeah, if you're Jason Garrett, you get on that flight last night or this morning, whenever the Giants headed back home, Maggie. And yeah, I mean, you only as an offensive coordinator, and I get they were missed, had, didn't have Saquon Barkley, who's never in the lineup, and they didn't have Kenny Galladay. And I know that Sterling Shepard got hurt with a quad injury in the middle part of that game. There was still enough. You don't need all that much to, uh, against that Chiefs defense to be able to score points. You had enough. You only score 17 points on the road against that defense. It was begging to give up yards. They're begging to give up points. Be a little creative with the game plan. If you realize your offensive line can't block, can Jason Garrett do something on the sideline there? Can he do anything? I think we got our answer to that, Moose. I think it's we got amazing. Our I mean, it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> is you get that performance, and then you get Judge talking about the fact that we're going back to work. I mean, Joe, you're two <laughs> and six. The season's been decided. It's over. I mean, it's over. We thought, too, if they won, there would be that slim hope of that seventh playoff seed, right? You could see it. You'd be one of those in-the-hunt teams because you couldn't be mathematically eliminated. You still have plenty of division games in front, even though it looks like the Cowboys are going to run away with it. All of that stuff, right? You'd have a glimmer of hope for that wild card game. And now that glimmer is gone. And you're right about, like, the the weapons. You know, you can't even say, well, look at all the people that the Giants didn't have on offense. Okay, Andrew Thomas, overcoming the loss of your left tackle, that is really that is really big. And obviously the depth on this offensive line is awful. But you're talking about guys who aren't in the lineup because they're almost never in the lineup. Saquon Barkley's had issues his entire career. Sterling Shepard has had injury issues his entire career. Giants, wanted, Giants decided to extend him. You're talking about Kenny Galladay not there. Kenny Galladay's coming off a season where he had major injury issues. The Giants thought he was past him. You have guys who have been injury concerns. It's not like this is so out of the blue. Oh, my goodness. The Giants don't have their weapons here. No. And Judge is a problem. Judge is For not, the first time. I, you judge know, is I, the problem. To be honest with you, I think, I think, judge, is, I think judge is a problem. Uh, and It's the first time I've kind of felt it coming out of a game. Uh, and I know there's been other instances of it. I get it. You know, but, I mean, we're 24 games into it here, Joe. I mean, you're 24 games some of the rationalization after the game, you know, where he, he's not like it's not like a human speaking. The stuff with the headsets last night, don't say that. I mean, someone, I mean, that is one where if I'm in the Giants PR department, I'm like, Ugh, what are you doing? Ooh. Like, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. The clock management. I mean, Joe, can you take the time out before the two minute warning? I mean, Peyton Manning's can, begging you. Can you do that before the two minute warning? Can you use the timeout? How about that when they use the second timeout in the second half? With three th- with three twenty two to go in the game, they let fifteen <laughs> seconds burn off before they called the timeout. That made no sense. Like, what are you doing on the sideline? What are you thinking about? Get your head in the game. I I think I have the motto for what the Joe Judge era has been to this point: oversell and underdeliver. Tampa, Rick. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you couldn't say it any better. You know, and we and we, not only when we get the coin toss, we defer. We defer to have that two minute drill, which is pathetic. I mean, I mean, talk about an insult to letting them get the ball first to score a touchdown right on us. But you know what? Well, and you if, defer and you come and we, out of you come out of halftime and go three and out. Yeah. Oh no. And and then the two minute drill. I mean, that's yeah. just ridiculous. But the, the, we talked all week and said, you know what? They're up against it. It's it could be it's going to be tough for them to win ten point underdog, but to lose like that, to lose like that with this coach, I don't even want to hear him get out in his, uh, his press conferences anymore. You, you have those uh, stupid, undisciplined penalties, the offsides, the uh, the personal foul on that punt that mm. where we started on the twenty, we're down. You know, I know we got a ten yard play, but I mean things like that is undisciplined of the team is just pathetic. And I'm, I'm like Moose, I'm, I agree. I mean. I, I don't know, Joe Judge. It, it, it's I have 
no answer for him. The, what he's saying, go yeah. back to work, go back to work. <laughs> Why? Well, working been, on penalties. Right. This, every- this is it. it it's <laughs> what one, have you been working on? Right. It, it's one thing to, to get beat because you're not good enough. That was not the case last night. That was not the case last night. That was not the case against Atlanta. That was not the case against Washington. That was not the case. There were the, the Giants love to find ways to beat themselves. They love to find ways to beat themselves. Because that's what bad teams do. That is what bad teams do. New York City, Rob, what's going on, Robbie? Hey, Moose. Hey, Maggie. How you doing? Hey, Rob. How you doing, Rob? Just, just wanted to ask you a quick question because I, I happen to respect both of your opinions greatly. Um, and I was listening this morning to the tirade that was uh, being put forth by Gio. Um, and that's not so much Boomer, but it has to do with Daniel Jones. I'm, I'm not a Daniel Jones fan. I, I, I wasn't a Daniel Jones fan going into – this season, based on last year, I wasn't happy with the sixth overall pick. However, I have slowly kind of changed my views on him as I watched him this season. And I, I, I saw a note this morning on the Internet, out of the eight games they've played, and I'm not sure how much you guys put into quarterback ratings, right. but when the quarterback ratings suck, people are like, oh, you know, it's not, look at his quarterback rating. He's awful. The quarterback rating is good. People are like, oh, it's not such a great stat. But nevertheless, out of eight games, he's over 90 90 for a quarterback rating, six out of eight games. And Gio and Boomer were making it seem like this morning that he's like one of the main problems. And Gio basically used the word that Daniel Jones sucks. He's awful. They should get rid of him. They should go a different direction. I, I can't sit here and say that the two and six record has anything to do with Daniel Jones. Cause to me, a lot of, a lot of these games, he's tried to put this team on his back. And last night, except for the miserable, miserable, inexcusable interception on that first drive. Right. I thought he played a great game, and and I, I don't I don't understand all the Daniel Jones bashing. I think this kid can. Steve Young gave him praise before the game. Said at, at the yeah. worst, he could be a really great play action quarterback, and maybe he can be a kid that can carry this team on his back. And he was praising him. And I don't get Boomer and Geo going on and on about if this guy is is he inconsistent. Yes, but I think he's been great this season. I really do. Mm. I, I wanted to see what you guys thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Rob, I have I have less. I, I I like Daniel Jones as a quarterback. Uh, Maggie and I have have I think we're we're kind of seeing eye to eye in this. Unless last night's game completely changed your opinion, Maggie, but I don't think Jones is the problem. I I don't. I think I think you look at game plans by Garrett is an issue. Um, I think if the offensive line clearly has been an issue, I don't think his athletic ability has been utilized to the best of his ability. I think you could be a lot more creative with Daniel Jones than the vanilla offense you've seen at times from Jason Garrett. Now, Daniel Jones has also got to be helped out. Mm -hmm. That would would have been a touchdown pass to Darius Slayton if there was not a hold on the play. I know people are saying, well, it was an overthrow. It wasn't an overthrow if the player was not held. If the player was not held and got the release and was not held by the defensive back number 25 of the Chiefs, that would have been a beautiful – and now I don't know if Slate would have caught the ball because he's Mr. Dropsies. He's like Stonehands back to Auburn days. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, and and he's also got to be helped out. The penny, taunt – whatever you say about the taunting, and I agree with you that the taunting penalty is awful. He taunted the player. So you, you can't be doing that if you're penny. Now, they're, they're two completely different arguments. Also, on the second and seven play – you know, on the on the second to last drive where he hits Darius Slayton for what should have been a five yard completion, if he breaks a tackle, maybe it's a first down. Slayton, the ball goes right through his hands. Yeah. You got to make that catch. I mean, you're an NFL wide receiver. He hits you right in the ha- like right here. Yeah, like right like he didn't even have to move. <laughs> like it's literally right here, and he drops the ball. Yeah. This is holding his hands up, like, like right, right in, in front, front of, of my his face. face. Like and- it was. Perfect. And that was funny he, to me. And I, he drops the ball. Uh, you know, here, I don't think if you were if you were making a decision about Daniel Jones and his future, and you based it on last night, you're not going to come to a great conclusion. I didn't think that he had a great game last night. It wasn't just the interception. I I just everything about his weapons and what he's able to do, I didn't feel like was on display. I thought his decision making wasn't great. Not just on that interception. A couple times they were talking about it should have been a pitch. Instead he decides to keep it. He gets stopped on a third and one. You know, just some things last night, he just seemed like he was off last night. And maybe that's because the pocket is collapsing in on him in a way because the tackles are not good. But again, they should be able to scheme around that or you hope they'd scheme around it. I can't, if I'm basing it on last night, you wouldn't love it. I still do think that Daniel Jones has tools that would make him a very good quarterback in this league. The guy throws a good ball, he throws a good deep ball. 
He obviously can use his legs. I mean, the problem with that is you want to make sure he gets down so he doesn't get hurt. My bottom line on this, I'm not trying to skirt the issue. I would be more inclined to stick with Jones than I would be Dave Gettleman or Joe Judge at this point. I think Jones has shown that at least he's got potential to be a good quarterback in this league. I don't know how good of a coach Joe Judge could be. And for Dave Gettleman, I mean, he'll say his resume speaks for itself. But in terms of the Giants, just look at the record with the roster you've put together. Giant fans want to hear from you. 877-337-6666. Moose and Maggie just getting going. Reacting to the Monday night loss by Big Blue and Arrowhead against the Chiefs last night. Judge blaming the headsets, timeouts, lack of lack of uh, two-minute offense. Garrett, the play call. And the only guy that takes out of blame is really Graham. Graham's defense was great last night. He was he was, he really was unbelievable. Good. He I mean, had a, he had a there's some the Chiefs are also and this is I'm not trying to take away from the Giants defense. They went in. They did a good they job. They did a very good job. The Chiefs are that what we thought that could have been a get right game for the Chiefs. That was not the case. No, no, it was not. It was not. They did a and they and they stayed disciplined playing that two deep shell. 